I will be discussing about the introduction to single directed components into uh, into Drupal 10.1. Since it is an experimental feature in Drupal, so how many of you know about SDC? How many of you have heard about SDC before? Okay, a very few members have heard about SDC. So this is the major change in Drupal frontend since the introduction of Drupal 8. Also, uh, as of now, only two components are there in Drupal code. Uh, which are using SDC and I have worked on both of them. So I have been working with SDC since last two months. So about me, uh, I am Gaurav, I am senior software engineer at Excelgram. And I have three plus years of experience working as a Drupal frontend developer. I have also been part of Drupal Camp India Week 2022. And you can find me on Drupal.org with the username Gaurav. So what do we are, what we are going to discuss today? So what are the issues we are addressing with the SDC? And how SDC works? How module and theme can extend SDC? And what is the scope of assets in SDC? And how can we create SDC component in Omami theme? Omami is an experimental theme in Drupal. So I will be creating a component using SDC into Omami. And what is the future of SDC in Drupal code? So the first thing first, what are the issues we are addressing? So uh, uh, how are CSS and JSR loaded? So, uh, like when, whenever someone comes from other technologies, so it is very really difficult for them to find out like how the CSS and JSR are loaded. So sometimes we are attaching the libraries using books, and sometimes we are attaching, we are creating libraries in libraries file and we are attaching them from print files. So uh, it is really very really difficult how a CSS and JSR is loaded and where our assets are located. So it, it is also a uh, problem by like, uh, to find out like, where our assets are located. So to, uh, to fix that problem, uh, the SDC has a resolution to that. And I constantly lose the context where I am in the code base. Also, uh, I, uh, I, have, I constantly lose like, where I am in the, where is my template. So what is a component? So component are the uh, reusable UI elements. So we can create components with components, with the components. We can create complex structures using uh, simpler UI components. Also, a component is made up of markup style script and metadata. So it contains some HTML and the style that is CSS files and some JavaScript and uh, some metadata. So what is single directory components? So as the name suggests, single directory components, like a, uh, we have a component inside a single directory. So as in the picture you can see, uh, we have a directory called components in a Omami theme. So uh, all of the components of our, uh, of our project will be inside the components folder. So in this example, we have a branding component. Inside the branding component, we have three files. One is branding.component.yml file. So this is basically uh, storing the metadata of this particular component. So it will help to discover the component. And also we will declare, our, uh, declare the schema and the metadata in the component.yml file. Uh, another one is branding.css. So this file is basically for the styling of the particular component and another one is uh, branding.pip. So here we will store our uh, markup for the uh, branding component and uh, we can have JS files as well that will be branding.js anything. And how it helps SDC and SDC, it is easy to refactor the code. So uh, for example, you are working on something, you are, so uh, earlier I was working on uh, refactoring the CSS code into Drupal uh, 10.1 into clarity. So it was really difficult to find like where is my CSS located. So by the introduction of SDC, it is really uh, helpful like all of the uh, files related to a particular component will be stored inside a single directory only. So here you can see uh, CSS and JS are stored inside the branding. So you don't have to go anywhere to look where uh, from where are JS and CSS are being loaded. So how does SDC works? So SDC works on the uh, principle of inheritance uh, that we have in print. So uh, if you check, if you see uh, in the start, uh, we can use include and embed to extend an, an component. So uh, you can see my theme, my theme is the name of your theme. It can be uh, the name of your module as well. And my component is the ID of your particular uh, component. It could be anything. And uh, we will use this in any template and in the result, we will have an uh, HTML, CSS and JavaScript and output. So how it comes that CSS and JS as an output? So uh, that comes into the scope of assets in SDC. Uh, asset scope is a built-in feature in SDC. So if you see in Drupal Pre Engine, 
So uh, it will automatically create a library out of the all of the CSS and JS file you have in the components, in the particular component, and it will create a library out of it, and it will attach it automatically, and then uh, you have your CSS and JS will be ready with your component. So you don't need to create any library, and you don't need to attach any library. So I will be giving you an example. Uh, I will be creating a component using HDC, and it is very simple to create a uh, component using HDC. So here in this in this example, I will be creating a HDC component that is footer promo for Umami theme. So uh, first of all, we will go to extend page and uh, we will install that single directory components module. So as of now, this is an experimental. That's why we have to install the single directory components module. In the later version, when it becomes stable, uh, you don't need to install the module. This will be it will be there by default. So as soon as you install the single directory components module, after that uh, you can uh, you can start creating your components. So in this example, I will be creating a component uh, for a blog bundle footer promo blog that is going to be created. So right now this is a uh, this is a blog that is coming from uh, this footer promo, and uh, we will be creating a a component for the same. So we will just go to the uh, same path, and we will see. Uh, so here you can see we have a marker for this uh, footer uh, block, bundle footer promo block. We have marker or all, all the marker related to it is stored in this file. And what will we do? Uh, we will just create a component out of it. And for the creating a component, we use uh, we create a, a directory for components inside a theme or module folder. Same we will be following here as well. And we will create a component directory inside the component directory. So here, in example, uh, we are creating a directory inside the whole Umami theme. So we have created a uh, components directory inside the component directory. We will create a, a component dot yellow file that will uh, that will have the metadata of the particular component. Also, we will we will create we will create a, a HTML file and a CSS file. So here, uh, you can see uh, we have created component dot yellow file. Uh, that is component dot yaml. Uh, it is uh, I written it by mistake the component dot yaml, and we will create a footer uh, promo dot pin file, and we will just use the same markup that we have uh, created in block from bundle footer promo block dot html dot pin, and we will just copy paste the markup in footer promo dot pin file, and also at the same time we will declare uh, we will in our component dot yaml file we will declare our metadata. So we uh, in the if you see in the fifth line in the schema. Uh, we have uh, an example of uh, schema dot json. Like there, we can see how we can declare all the schema of a of a component. So and the and the next is the name of the component. Can you, can you open in the schema? Okay. Yeah. Then uh, status is uh, status is experimental. Like as of now, the module is is not stable, so status is experimental. Also, this is not a mandatory field. We can leave it, and uh, we we can also declare the properties like what are the variables that we are using inside our tool file. We can declare all of the variables inside this. Also, uh, for same, we can uh, for the tool blocks, we can create slots in our slots in our uh, component dot yaml file so so here like uh, this is our uh, footer bundle promo dot block html dot pin file here earlier we were using the uh, html uh, the markup but now we will like we have created a component out of it that is footer promo dot pin we will just use include and uh, we will we are here we are using embed uh, to uh, Extend the extend the component. So you can use also use uh, certain properties like uh, you uh, you can see uh, how I am using the component. So in the line number thirty, you can see uh, demo mommy is the name is the theme name and the footer promo is the component name that I have just created. And uh, we are using all of the variables that we have in our footer promo dot pin file. Also, we can replace the values. Uh, right now, I am not replacing the values. That's why I have used like this. Also, we can replace the values, and by using this, only this, uh, it will create a component. So, if by just saving this, and if you go to front end, so uh, now it is the component is coming from. If you see here, the component is coming from uh, 
demo of my footer promo. So with an with an icon, you can see it here. The component is now coming from the demo mommy theme. Also, uh, we can create CSS file. CSS file like uh, as of now, I have created component of YAML file and the footer promo .tweet file. We can also create CSS file. So here, we, we, I have created a footer promo .css file, and I, I did not create any library or I did not attach any library. I just created a footer promo .css file. This is same as the ID of my component. That is the name of my component, and save will be loaded automatically. And if you see, like I have just created this footer promo .css file, and I am just, just removing the footer promo .css that we have already created uh, for the component, and uh, we will just remove the library of uh, we will just remove the CSS file as well. Like earlier, we were using, we were coding it from the earlier component, and we will just plus the catch the plus, and now you can see the CSS is loading uh, for the particular component. The CSS is loaded from our component that we just created. Here you can see the CSS is coming from demo umami components footer promo dot CSS file. So like this, we can uh, create, we can add our CSS and JS file to it. Also, uh, if you have noticed, uh, we, we are missing an icon just after find out mode. So as because we have uh, removed, we have moved the CSS file from somewhere. So the background, the the path for background icon has been changed. So we, we can just go to a CSS file and change the path accordingly, and it will be, it will reflect it will reflect the icon here. So yeah. The icon is here. As soon as I just uh, change the path in the path for the background image in the footer promo CSS file. So what's next? So what is the future of SDC in Drupal code? So uh, like my maintainers are working on exposing the components to site builder. So in future releases, you will see uh, we can directly embed the components from our from like site builder can directly. To uh, directly embed the components in layout builder. Also, they are working on live reloading as storyboard. So, whenever you uh, made any changes and just you, you just save your file, then your component will be reloaded live. Like as you have seen in storyboard, like whenever you save any, any file, the components get reloaded. So here you can find out all of the resources. If you want, you can take a picture of it. So uh, the documentation related to how we can create components in single directory. Uh, you can find out it here. Also, if you want, uh, you can join the component channel that is on uh, Slack, Drupal Slack. And if you want to see the video uh, with audio that I have just shown you, you can go to this link, you can uh, see the video. And if you want to see working examples of SDC, you can just install the SDC example module. If you have any questions, you can ask me. How is this different? So, like Petal uh, earlier we have to depend on third party, that is Petal Now we have created it for a Drupal. Like every other text type was using it from like very far, like very long time back. Like we like, were using it from very back time, but like uh, we have created it later, but like we will be exposing it to side builders. So that is not uh, possible yeah, in the Petal But even here also you have to create the component like you do in Petal Yeah. Right. So we have to create a component after that we can release. So like this, that we have to do some additional backend work to add that component available to the backend. Whereas here you might not need it because we have right. already supports it. Uh, as soon as you have the component of ML file, mm -hmm. uh, you will do not need uh, any other thing. Your component will be discoverable as soon as you have the file. Yeah. In, in parallel, you have to create paragraphs and map and things like that. Right. In the pattern, we uh, <coughs> define kind of structure like uh, we have the modules, uh, organization, <coughs> organization, pages. Uh, how we can manage those components and how we can manage the LSD set? So, in everything is like uh, in a pattern of the story, we have a visual view. While we create the component, while we passing the uh, story or the component, or we are passing the JP data to it. And we see the how the components look like. Okay? But in SD set, I am not able to see the components look like. And in SDC, how we can pass the data, right? Uh, 
Uh, is there any way to pass the data to the JSON to check how uh, how exactly my components will look like? And then I can go and integrate with the tool, right? So uh, this is inside your theme only, so you don't have to delete anything. You just go to any of your file. Where you go to actually? Yeah. Drupal, we need to include that file, right? Yeah. As Matthew you showed me that the, you uh, you done with the Futa components and you wrote some files, right? And uh, after that, you know, uh, we delete the Futas and the Futa dot HTML or uh, whatever the Drupal code node files, okay? Where you include that hierarchy structure. You found, yeah, right? I I got your question. And then we uh, add the include and we uh, replace the where else, right? right? But before that, you want to see how my components is look like as the storybooks where we uh, develop component first and we check how uh, this design is look like this, okay? And then we integrate with the exact uh, Drupal component or Drupal node or whatever it may be. So as of now, uh, we are not uh, showing the components when they are ready. We, we have to include them and we have, we have, or we have to extend them, then we embed have to them. Right? After that, we can extend them. Not, I mean, System. No, we do not have a new system as of now. This is who is it? We get the data for this components from the tool. Mm -hmm. It's still great for me to say for the pre processing to be done, and only then you can get the data. Mm -hmm. How is it independent of the process? All of the variables that are available to the particular file, you can use them to uh, store your data. So, like if you if you are doing any pre processing in, inside your docking uh, file, you can use those variables into your file. Like you cannot, you cannot alter the alter the component itself. You cannot write any hook outside the component. Whatever you are doing, it should be inside the component. Otherwise, it will not alter anything. Outside. So that processing should be inside the. Component. Yeah, if you are altering the component, it should be inside your, inside the component. And if you are uh, if you are changing anything into uh, the traditional Drupal system, then uh, you can change it. The time asking this is there is a dependency on the backend here because they need to do the processing. Only then uh, people who are working on this particular component can get that data and use it. And uh, like, like, like I said, if, if we don't have a previous system, then it also makes the people working on this component to wait until the pre processing is done and the data is done. Uh, for that, you can use stated data to show. Like, I have shown you that we can replace, replace the value of the variables. You can use stated, you can use stated data to show. All of this. Are you going to replace that factory after the process? Yes. Sorry? Uh, he's asking questions when you move the preprocessing thing and then the value of that variable is available to the So, uh, like uh, preprocessing is something we are uh, doing it from very, very past, right? So, if you are doing preprocessing for, uh, for changing anything, so you cannot directly change anything in the, com in the component. So, earlier you were doing it for uh, like the blocks, so you can. You can still do it for the block right now. Are you doing the pre processing in SDC or B? We are not. Doing it. And if, you are doing, one, if you are doing the footer component, right? Yes. For the, to, to do the pre processing on the footer component, we can do the pre processing for that particular footer component. And then we pass the variable and then we have a little right? In this case, we are. So, so in components, you cannot enter anything from outside. Like if you, you, we have created a footer from the component. So you cannot alter anything, alter anything from outside the component. Whatever, whatever you need to alter, you have to do write code into the component itself. So you cannot do anything. No external stuff is needed when you are creating a component. I don't understand what exactly we are doing component or environment. So in component or environment, file, we uh, declare the metadata. So we, we are declaring the name of the particular component. We are declaring like the slots, like three blocks we are using into our component. That twin file inside the component, we are declaring all the slots into the component.yml file, and also uh, we can uh, we can library. Section, uh, Sorry, we have, for example, in the footer section, uh, let's consider we are displaying the two to three things like uh, one is the text and one is the like uh, subtext. In that case, how we can declare? Okay. Uh, so, we need to pass what kind of metadata we need to pass? Uh, yeah. Let's consider uh, if it is an uh, object let's say it's a no, no, let's say for, uh, let's say, uh, for a complex example, in menu's case, in the footer case, we uh, pass simple metadata, this is string, this is something, right? In menu's case, how we can declare the menu hierarchy structure in the component environment? So for menus, I do not have the answer right now, but for other components, uh, we will declare all the all of the variables that we have present inside, like all of the fields that we have for the particular component, we will declare all of the fields, so here you can see, 
we are putting our slots and as well as the fields like uh, one is title attribute, we are doing all other things and uh, we are also declaring the type of the, uh, the field is. Yes. That's why I'm asking again, okay, we have a uh, complex structure because when we go for the SDC, we need to design the whole so, so even if even if we are using the petal app, I don't think so. Like someone uses the petal app to create menus. So menus are something that we have to create only once. And why we use petal app? We use petal app just to create the reusable components. So that is not reusable component. Yeah, yeah. We need to develop actually. I can use the menus. No, no. Go ahead. Yes. So let's say that you have a you have a component domain component and inside that you want unlimited number of variables called as mm -hmm. So in this case, how do you do that if the metadata cannot be passed from one component to another? Uh, metadata cannot be passed from another. You said that metadata, whatever you write, it needs to be in that component, right? So is, is that a way to do a parent child relationship? Uh, that is already there. I did not say like we cannot pass on the variables from one component to another. I was saying just we cannot do any external stuff to alter the value of those variables. We cannot write external books for these components. We can always use the components like I, I was working on one of the exam, one of the component in Omami thing. So we are um, we, we are have, we were using three components inside a single component, and we were using three types of views, and we were just using a single component, and we were all, we were just uh, we, we were just using we were using a uh, component, and we were just uh, part, like we, we were just. Uh, um, Restructuring the fields and we were just creating uh, views out of it. Like three views just out of single component by just restructuring the fields. The one title view was on the top, and now in the second, uh, we are using, we are creating the second component. We have just uh, moved this uh, title view to second number. So that how we used it. So you can pass the data. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We cannot alter it. Does it provide the interface uh, in terms of uh, the fields, we must be mentioning the fields in the application. Does it provide the compatibility with the fields to make the fields? Yeah, it, it does provide. Is there something other options on the parallel server? As of now, I haven't explored that thing, but uh, I will get to do So, like uh, for paragraphs, I believe like we can create a component and we can just pa we can just replace the values inside. Inside the paragraph, your HTML profile, which yeah, you can just you can just uh, replace the values if they are ready. Then we can do that. Do there have any other questions? Thank you, everyone. Uh, you can find out more. <laughs> Thank you.